Absolutely. So it is a great pleasure for me to introduce to you Dr. Ken Bach. I better start. My time is running. Okay. It's, uh, I need some water. Can I? Thanks. Um, well, in the speaker world, you know, there are always some tough acts to follow. You heard somebody say something about following Andy Wakefield and, you know, follow Jeff Bland in the past, things like that. Some people you might know. No, it's very tough to follow what just happened, uh, especially, you know, after there have been tears in my eyes, I'm sure many of your eyes and the emotions. But um, I'm going to do the best I can. And uh, I think it's very important what I'm going to talk to you about, which is going to piggy tail uh, the talks of both Dr. Shattuck and Dr. Baker, um, who have kind of set the, the table, so to speak, and hopefully I can serve some of the dinner, and then maybe Dr. Eldar will uh, serve the rest of the dinner. Because these, all these talks, in some way, because of what you saw with Dr. Baker's talk about everything being in, in that Venn diagram is so perfect, and I actually use that. I don't, I, actually, if you see it on the slide, I use it for my four A's, autism, ADHD, asthma, and allergy, and all the overlap. It's the same kind of thing, that there's not one size fits all, and there's not one cause uh, is the reason for autism or any of the four A's. And so uh, you heard a talk by Dr. Baker that was exceptional because he's the type of thinker that can really see the whole picture and present it in, a, in somewhat of a philosophical, philosophical way that many scientists, unfortunately, don't have the ability to do. And I think, I don't know if you could, hopefully you were able, I wouldn't say I were not, hopefully you're able to take away the importance of that kind of talk. I know a lot of you sit here and you want the details. You want, what can I do for my kid? Which nutrient can I give him? You know, which this and that. And you didn't get that with Sid's talk. But what you got was an approach that is really so important, not just to the health and wellness of your child, but also to you and your other family members, and your parents. And that's one of the important things. And I hope, you know, this is not going to run me over time, but this is it's really important to for you to understand that, that a lot of what we're talking about, a lot of what I'm going to talk about today about inflammation, is not just about the kids with autism, although this is what it's titled, Clinical Approaches to Chronic Inflammation and Autism Spectrum Disorders. This information is very relevant to other family members and to you guys. And because of the stress involved with taking care of children, with autism spectrum disorders, you need to take care of yourselves too. I want you to remember that. It's easy to forget that as you dedicate your lives. And I see more determined parents and dedication in parents of the kids on the spectrum than anybody I've ever seen in my whole career. Um, but you've got to remember, you're not useful to your family if you don't also take care of yourself. I want to leave you with that message. Very, very important. I hope, okay. Now, this is a, uh, I'm just going to talk to you a little about the immune system. Dr. Eldard frequently talks about this. This is a slide that I adapted from her slides. So just so you know, we do, we do have a collegial way of sharing slides with uh, some of the speakers that we uh, respect. And um, this just goes to show you, do I have the, um, is there, otherwise I'll go to my thing, yeah. That you look at the immune system, which is your defense against foreign invaders, okay? The key for the immune system is to be able to react appropriately to something like a virus or a bacteria. But the sine qua non of the immune system is not to react to self. It's to be able to react to foreign and not self. And you're going to see that that's a problem in many children. Um, touch I can't, okay. In my, um, shoot. It's in there. Okay, anyway. Let's see if Anthony has one. Yeah. Anton, do you have an extra laser pointer Ken would like to use? Mine disappeared. I have one, but it's going to be going through my thing, and it's going to take me about a minute or two. The, um, you see the underlying la layer there is your basically protective barriers, skin, mucous membranes, uh, natural microbial flora, things like that. Then, the, then you, the next level is the innate or nonspecific immunity. It's more like immature immunity, immune system in some way. It's your phagocytes, which are the cells that go around engulfing things like viruses and cleaning up foreign debris after there have been immune reactions and, and the like. And especially macrophages, and as I go into the talk, when I talk about 
inflammation in the nervous system, you're going to hear about microglia, which in some way are the macrophages that have relocated to the brain and become these type of uh, cells with a very, very important companion role to the neurons, and in essence, your immune cells in the brain, microglia. And then the more specific or learned immunity are antibodies, which are these immune proteins that are made by your body, by B cells that eventually um, differentiate to what's called plasma cells, that are made to specifically fight foreign invaders. You get an antibody to a certain virus, like the cold virus or the Epstein-Barr virus. You get an a antibody to a certain virus or a fungi. And also the other arm of the immune system is the cellular immunity or the lymphocytes, T cells and B cells. Um, and we're going to talk about them in a second. The immune system is very complex. I don't have a lot of time to go over it, but I want to give you an overview because you need to understand a little bit about the immune system to understand about inflammation. All right? And this is the key. So there'll be a couple of pearls to take away. And a lot of people talk about, and a lot of supplements say, we're going to boost that immune system. We're going to really kick it up, you know, tenfold. The key to the immune system is balance, Okay? and a balanced response between the, 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 the arms of the immune system, between the cellular response from the T and the B cells and the humoral response, which is the antibodies or the immune proteins. Okay, balance, remember that. In fact, the first book that I wrote for, for Dr. Shattuck was called The Road to Immunity in 1997, and it was, it was called The Road to Immunity, but I initially was going to call it immune balance because that is the key to the immune system. And a lot of these children, as you'll see, have immune systems that are not balanced. So... These are about T cells. These are your very smart cells in the immune system, T cells. And they can be broken down, actually, more than two, but I'm just going to start with two to, to give you a sense. There's the Th1 cells, which are responsible for cell-mediated immunity. It's how you kind of fight viruses and some fungi and cancer. And Th2 is humoral or antibody-mediated immunity. Um, so nobody has a, a, a laser pointer. Okay. Okay, thanks. Um, and that's your humoral immunity, which is your antibodies. And that is more responsible for allergy type uh, of situations. So you have the cell media on one hand and the humoral on the other hand. Okay, just remember. And you need them to be in balance. It's not enough to say one is bad, or bad as one is good. It needs to be in balance. And the way these immune cells talk to each other are via something called cytokines, which are basically immune messenger molecules, just like your neurotransmitters are the way that the nerve cells talk to each other. Your immune cells talk to each other by cytokines. These are small peptides secreted by a variety of cells which regulate both the initiation and the maintenance of this immune response through a complex network. And I, want, I always like to have you understand that the two most complex systems in the body are the ones that I find myself living in, of course, is the immune system and the brain. And so it amazes me sometimes that they work as well as they do because they are so complex. Yeah. Okay. No. I forget. It's okay. And these cytokines, and this is another slide that actually I adapted um, from Dr. Eldor's. Uh, I, have, uh, I have a number of slides in this regard as well, but I thought this was really clear in the way it was put is that this, they can be divided into various categories, recognizing that many cytokines actually have multiple cellular sources with multiple targets and overlapping range of activities. That is very important. What it's saying is that it's not so clear-cut. There are a lot of these cytokines that in some way can be inflammatory, in another way may be regulatory, may come from different cells. So you have the Th1, um, which is for the cell-mediated immunity, uh, having a cytokine pattern of IL-2 and interferon gamma. And the Th2 cytokine profile is more IL-4, IL-5, IL-13, and actually, and there is some with IL-10 and TGF-beta. But, um, and the innate, but I want to focus right now on some of the innate and pro-inflammatory cytokines because I'm talking to you about inflammation. The innate ones coming from cells like macrophages are tumor necrosis factor alpha, a very, very important cytokine in the autistic uh, kids, you saw a, a slide that I think Dr. Shattuck put up. No, no, it was actually uh, Dr. Baker about, he showed you the levels from Dr. Wakefield's slide of the tumor necrosis factor alpha being very high in one of those slides. These kids tend to have a lot of that. It's a very, very pro-inflammatory cytokine.